Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the state of gaming and what I think the future can hold for gaming. So let's get into it. So Sony currently and Microsoft are not doing good. Microsoft's doing worse than Sony. But Sony, as of late, as of basically two days ago, this article was posted two days ago, has reported that the PS5 sales are not as they would expect and that the console is in this later stage of its life cycle. According to this, Sony now expects to sell 4 million fewer PS5 consoles in its 2023 physical year ending on March 31st, which means to a lot of shareholders, if you don't sell enough, you're probably not going to make money. That's a probably, I don't know for sure. That's just what a lot of people would probably assume in this case. So that's not good for their shareholders, which would not be good for Sony. So to kind of counteract this, according to Sony Senior Vice President Naomi, they said, as such, we will put more emphasis on the balance between profitability and sales. For this reason, we expect the annual sales pace of the PS5 hardware will start falling from this next fiscal year. With that said, they also added they have no plans to release any new major existing franchise titles in this fiscal year. So they're not going to release any new IPs, pretty much, that's what that means. And they're not going to probably release any continuations like the new like a new god of war a new horizon zero dawn stuff like that with this said they're going to try to probably increase profitability and in sales which would translate to they're going to try to pivot and do something different than just the ps5 with the console you know maybe pivot into a handheld maybe pivot into a portable console probably go online um, on the computer which i think is most likely they might try all those but going into microsoft we got them doing really bad. I'm going to be totally honest. Microsoft is in a really shaky spot. Their sales have been very, very underwhelming, to say the least, according to this article. I'll post all these down in the chat, by the way. The PS5 has sold an estimate of 48.9 millions in its lifetime. 48.9 million units in its lifetime worldwide. As for the Xbox... It's only sold 25.37 million units in its lifetime. So as far as console wars go and sales and stuff like that, you know, PlayStation's dominating Xbox as far as sales go. But even the PlayStation sales are not hitting their own metrics that they need them to hit. Now this article, by the way, was from records from November 2023, so it's not completely up to date. But it's a pretty good starting point for what I'm trying to say. So the Nintendo Switch has sold 132.9 million units worldwide. Now granted, the Switch did go through COVID and it had enough supply to probably sell during that time frame and it probably bumped their sales up a lot. Especially with Animal Crossing, people want to play Smash with their family and stuff like that. During that time, these consoles, the PS5 and Xbox, the new ones came out around that time frame, especially the PS5 coming out in November of 2020. And the supply was very low, and the demand was extremely high. And I think it's over time, the supply never really met the demand until recently, but the demand's been lowered quite a bit. So now you have a really awkward gap, which causes a lot of things, what you're seeing here with Microsoft and Sony struggling. That's my theory. So we got Microsoft saying that now they made the decision that we're going to take four games to other consoles that used to be exclusives to the PC and Xbox. Most of them are on PC and Xbox. That's what they mean. So they're going to take it to PS5 and Nintendo Switch. And they didn't say which games, but it's theorized that Hi-Fi Rush, Pennant, then I don't actually know what that game is, but then also Sea of Thieves and Grounded. So those are some pretty big titles, especially Sea of Thieves. I think it's the biggest title here. And then Hi-Fi Rush, I probably would say second, and then Grounded would be third, and I don't actually know what the other game is. So we're talking some pretty big hitters you know it's not halo but it's pretty big hitters from microsoft going to other consoles so they're trying to expand and be a very they're trying to make money that's what they're trying to do they're trying to make money as much as they possibly can with retaining as much as they can like keeping halo and everything like that so nintendo basically microsoft is in a bad spot nintendo on the other hand the switch sales passed 139 million according to this article It'll be the main business, basically, plan heading into 2024, says Nintendo's president. The Switch has been doing extremely well. 
according to this graph here, which is actually pretty accurate, there's only one console that outsells the handhelds from Nintendo, and it's the PS2. The Switch is the second most sold portable console. I can, I'm grouping handhelds and portable consoles into one when I say this, by the way. Because they can be kind of interchanged depending on who you're talking to. Some people distinguish it, some people don't. But the DS in its whole family life cycle is 154 million units sold. The Switch is 139 million units sold. The Game Boy is 118 million units sold. And the Game Boy Advance and the Game Boy are split. And the Game Boy Advance has 81 million. DS has 75 million units sold. So this brings me into my next topic here. We're seeing a whole lot of these handhelds be sold a lot. And they are like on fire being sold from Nintendo. Now, Sony has tried this with the PSP and PlayStation Vita. They kind of stopped those projects for some reason. I don't know, probably because of sales most likely. I don't think Microsoft's ever tried that uh, handheld. But this is also something to bring up here. This is the stocks. This is basically investors investing in Nintendo. Nintendo is a gaming company and produces toys. So their entire market is around gaming. Over the past year, their stock is doing exceptionally well at 42% uptick. That is a very, very good for a stock. And I'll compare that to Sony's. Now, the thing with Sony's is you have to remember they are not just a gaming company. They are a multimedia company. They do cameras. They do TVs. They do a lot of things for Hollywood. They make movies. So they're not just for PlayStation, but PlayStation is a very big part of Sony. With that said, two of these major peaks right here, two major bullet points that they feel like they have to bring up when it comes to this stock are referring to games in the PlayStation. So that if that tells you anything, it is a very big impactful thing to this company. And to be fair, I compared both year to year here, and Sony's only up 1.5%. So with that said, in the past year, they haven't been really doing that great. Their stock's been pretty much stagnant, if not down here it's been doing bad up here it's doing good but now it's back to being stagnant they have to switch up something and that's what this article is saying is basically they're saying we need to prof we need to prioritize profitability and sales or make a balance between them but really that just means they need to make money essentially and they need to pivot into something but that said pc gaming is still on the rise i don't think this will ever stop going up this is a graph number of PC gamers worldwide from 2008 to 2024. It just keeps going up. But with this said, this is a huge number. This is in the millions. So this is 1 billion point 85, 800,000 million people playing on PC. This is including Steam and Epic and all that. So we have a huge marketplace online on the computer. On the computers, it's proven that handhelds sell a ton by Nintendo. What I project and what I think will be going forward is these companies will most likely pivot to online stores and make their own online store like Epic Games did. So it'd be like the Sony store, the Microsoft store, etc. They'll put all their games there, especially their exclusives, and then you basically buy from them, which would be a very, very good idea and very beneficial to everybody. Or they, or and, so they could do both at the same time. They pivot into more so a handheld portable console situation where they basically give you, at this point, currently, maybe not, but definitely in the extremely near future, the next couple years, they can make a very good, almost portable PC like the Steam Deck and be able to let you dock it and play like maybe up to 4K, 30 frames a second, or have it handheld mode where it's like 1080p, 60 frames a second. And you get to play these games that are AAA titles at that point. Now, that's really it. Basically, I don't think, in my opinion, consoles will be a thing anymore. With both the Xbox and the PS5 basically taking hits right now. Absolute L's. I think both of them are looking at this and saying, it's not working. We need to switch up. We need to, we need to go to a portable, handheld mode, PC something else so we can get some money out of this and that's where i think we're at with gaming um my hot take is this is just throwing this out there in the far future probably 10 maybe in 15 years from now ar headsets will become in my opinion the future of gaming but that's far out there that's not even 
close to Rhino. But anyway, thank you for watching, everyone. Have a good day.